Welcome back, it's Back to the Basics. I'm Sean Barr. Today we are talking SD-WAN versus traditional networks. Let's go! All right, we're back and we are talking SD-WAN versus traditional networks. Before we jump into SD-WAN, let's talk a little bit about traditional networks. So, in a traditional network, let's say we had multiple connections. And what does that mean? Well, let's say we have an MPLS connection and a VPN WAN connection. If we're using a traditional network and a traditional routing protocols, there really isn't a way to basically say, I want to send voice over traffic path A and traffic path B. And if something drops or if I lose some, some data, I want it to pick the path that actually got the data. So, so we didn't lose any audio. That You can't do that in a traditional network. Additionally, if we want to do things like maybe my MPLS, I want to leverage for voice and video, but my internet connection, uh, my VPN over the internet, I want to leverage that for like file transfer, SMB file transfer. You can do that in a traditional network through policy-based routing. And so essentially you're configuring a policy that matches that type of traffic and sending it over that path. It's a very manual process and you need to do it, you need to configure it on both sides. So you need to configure the policy on side A and you need to configure the policy on side B. So the return traffic follows the same path. So you could do that in a traditional network, but it's very manual. Additionally, if you wanted to load balance, you could load balance across the, the internet line and the MPLS line, but you really have no control of what traffic is going to go over path A or B without some type of policy route. And if we just said, hey, we're not going to do policy routing, we're not going to do equal cost load balancing, we're going to have to do something like just a traditional network route. It's going to take one path and one path only, so either MPLS or the internet-based VPN. So, so essentially you're not going to leverage both connections. So if you just, by default, I enable some routing protocols and I tune it so that I have a primary path and a backup path. If my primary path fails, my backup's going to kick in. You really are only going to utilize half of your available bandwidth. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about SD-WAN. So we kind of defined some of the limitations of a traditional network. Well, with SD-WAN, there's an application aware basically an engine. And so that's the software defined aspect. So we can create a policy and we can say, hey, I want my voice traffic to be insured, meaning that I send uh, a packet down path A and a packet down path B. And if path B has some packet loss, it's gonna pick path A for that particular voice packet. And so we're not gonna have any real time media loss. So that's one benefit of, of software defined. Additionally, um, I can control that from a centralized policy. So the separation of the network operation and the control policy, that's traditional of SD-WAN. So we have a, uh, I have a policy I can define. I want my SMB traffic to leverage this connection. And then if that connection is not available, use this one. And there's some intelligence to it. So I could say if there's some latency or jitter or delay on a link, I could not use it for certain types of traffic. So it does a lot of monitoring in real time. And so that gives you visibility that traditionally in networks we didn't have. Now you could monitor with SNMP and other things like that, but it's not real time in the actual path giving you what the experience is like on or leveraging that particular connection. So SD-WAN, network operation and control policy are separated. We have the ability to define policies and have the entire network respond as opposed to configuring individual components like in a traditional network. Um, we have the flexibility to leverage both connections. We can do some advanced things like internet hop off and, and basically what that means is leveraging my local internet connection for maybe Office 365 connections. However, uh, for my CRM application, going all the way to my centralized site to access that CRM application. All right, so that's about it. So we covered a little bit about traditional networks. We talked a little bit about SD-WAN and how we can separate the network operational layer from the policy and control. Um, and that's about it. If I said anything in this video that you're like, man, I'd love to know more about that, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next Back to the Basics. Thanks for watching.